Mali, a landlocked country in West Africa, is often perceived through the lens of its present-day challenges, including political instability and economic struggles. However, what many do not know is that this African nation is the product of a vast and wealthy empire that once dominated West Africa. Today's Mali, with its capital at Bamako, is a tapestry of diverse ethnic groups and cultures, a legacy of its historical empire. The country's geography, ranging from the Sahara Desert in the north to the Niger River and Sudanian savanna in the south, shaped its historical role as a nexus of trade routes that connected West Africa with the Mediterranean and Middle Eastern worlds. Despite the challenges of the 21st century, Mali retains aspects of its glorious past, particularly in its music, oral traditions, and architecture. The echoes of the Mali Empire are still evident in cities like Timbuktu and Gao, which were once major centers of trade and learning. Timbuktu, in particular, remains a symbol of the historical, intellectual, and cultural achievements of the Mali Empire. Its ancient manuscripts, mosques, and madrasas are a testament to a time when the city was a global center of Islamic learning and scholarship. In this video, we will reveal the rich and complex history of Mali, tracing its origins back to the formidable Mali Empire, which stood as a beacon of wealth, culture, and learning, housing some of the greatest minds in African including the great Mansa Musa, regarded as the richest man to ever walk the earth. Also, as a way of supporting the channel, hit the like button of the video, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. Your support means a lot to us. The Mali Empire's roots can be traced to the small state of Kangaba, inhabited by the Mandinka people, near the upper Niger River. Its history is a blend of oral tradition and Islamic record, particularly from the chroniclers of North Africa and the Middle East. The most significant figure in the empire's formation was Sundiata Keita, known as the Lion King. His reign, beginning around 1235, marked the end of the Soso Kingdom's dominance and the rise of Mali. Sundiata Keita, the Lion King. Sundiata Keita's story, as recounted in the Sundiata epic, is a blend of historical fact and mythic narrative, making him a larger-than-life figure in West African history. Born in the early 13th century to Nare Magan, Konate, also known as Magan Konfata, the ruler of the small Mandinka kingdom of Kangaba, Sundiata's early life was marked by adversity. According to legend, he was a sickly child who couldn't walk until the age of seven, which led to skepticism about his potential as a future leader. Despite these early challenges, Sundiata rose to prominence through his strength of character and determination. His story is one of resilience and triumph over adversity. He was said to possess a commanding presence and remarkable leadership qualities from a young age, attributes that would later define his rule. To understand Sundiata's significance, it's essential to consider the political landscape of West Africa at the time. Prior to Sundiata's rise, the region was a mosaic of different kingdoms and tribes, with the Soso Kingdom, under the rule of King Sumauro Kante, emerging as a dominant force. The Soso were known for their aggressive expansionism and posed a significant threat to the smaller Mandinka states, including Kangaba. The turning point in Sundiata's life came when he was forced into exile after his father's death. This period in exile was a formative time for Sundiata, during which he gathered support from other kingdoms and tribes oppressed by the Soso. His time away from Kangaba was not just a period of survival, but also of strategic planning and alliance building. He met and forged bonds with several key figures who would later play crucial roles in his conquests and the administration of the empire. Sundiata's return from exile marked the beginning of his quest to overthrow King Sumaoro Kante and liberate the Mandinka people from Soso rule. This period was characterized by a series of military campaigns, where Sundiata demonstrated not only his prowess as a warrior, but also his skills as a strategist and a leader. The most notable of these campaigns was the Battle of Karina, also known as the Battle of Krina or Karina, around 1235 where Sundiata's forces decisively defeated the Soso army, effectively ending their dominance in the region. 
The victory at Carina was more than a military triumph. It marked the birth of the Mali Empire. Sundiata, now hailed as a liberator and unifier, went on to establish Mali as a formidable state. He consolidated the various Mandinka clans and extended his influence over a significant part of West Africa, laying the foundations for what would become one of the greatest empires in African history. One of Sundiata's most significant contributions to the Mali Empire was the establishment of a structured system of governance. He implemented a centralized form of administration, appointing governors to oversee different regions of the empire, ensuring efficient and effective governance. This system allowed for the diverse peoples within the empire to maintain a degree of autonomy while still contributing to the central authority. Sundiata is also credited with the introduction of the Gbara, a deliberative assembly that played a crucial role in the governance of the empire. The Gbara was composed of representatives from various clans and regions, serving as an advisory council to the Mansa, emperor. This assembly was a pioneering form of democratic governance, allowing for a degree of consensus and representation in decision-making. Under Sundiata's leadership, the Mali Empire laid the economic foundations that would later be the basis of its legendary wealth. He recognized the importance of trade and secured key trade routes across West Africa, including those pivotal in the gold and salt trade. By controlling these routes, Mali became a hub of commerce, attracting traders from across Africa and beyond. Sundiata also introduced agricultural reforms, promoting the cultivation of vital crops like millet, sorghum, and rice. These reforms not only ensured food security within the empire, but also contributed to economic stability and growth. Sundiata's reign was not only significant in terms of political and economic achievements, but also in its cultural and social impact. He fostered a sense of unity among the diverse peoples of the empire, blending different cultural practices into a cohesive Mali identity. Oral tradition, particularly the role of griots, traditional storytellers and historians, was central to this cultural integration. Griots played a crucial role in preserving the history and legends of the empire, with the Sundiata epic being the most famous example. Sundiata Keita's legacy extends far beyond his lifetime. He is remembered not only as a great warrior and king, but also as a unifier and a visionary leader who laid the foundations for one of Africa's greatest empires. His story, a blend of history and legend, continues to inspire and hold a significant place in the cultural heritage of West Africa. The Golden Age of the Mali Empire particularly under the reign of Mansa Musa, from 1312 to 1337, represents a pinnacle of African medieval history, characterized by immense wealth, extensive trade networks, and a flourishing of culture and learning. This period is not only significant for its material prosperity, but also for the empire's impact on the broader Islamic and global world. Mansa Musa, often cited as one of the wealthiest individuals in history, was more than just a ruler of great riches. He was a visionary leader who transformed the Mali Empire into a thriving cosmopolitan center. His pilgrimage to Mecca in 1324 is one of the most storied events of his reign. This journey was not just a religious undertaking, but a diplomatic and economic mission, as it showcased the empire's wealth and grandeur on an international stage. During this pilgrimage, Mansa Musa's caravan consisted of thousands of soldiers, officials, attendants, subjects, and slaves, along with a vast amount of wealth. He is reported to have carried approximately 18,000 kilograms of gold, which he distributed along his journey. This lavish display of wealth left a lasting impression in the regions he passed through, notably Cairo, where his generosity with gold caused significant inflation that impacted the local economy for years. The Mali Empire's economy was extraordinarily advanced for its time, largely due to its control over the trans-Saharan trade routes. These routes were lifelines for trade between West Africa and the Mediterranean and Middle Eastern world. Gold and salt were the principal commodities, with Mali having a near monopoly on their trade. The gold mines of Bambouk, Bur, and later Akan provided immense wealth, while the salt mines of Taghaza and Taudeni were equally crucial. 
Beyond gold, the Mali Empire also controlled the trade of other vital commodities like salt, which was as valuable, if not more so, in certain contexts than gold. Salt, essential for preserving food and maintaining human health, was mined in the northern regions of the empire, in places like Taghaza, and transported across the Sahara. This trade in salt was not just an economic activity, it was a lifeline that connected various parts of the empire and facilitated interactions between diverse cultures and peoples. The control of these trade routes allowed Mali to exercise influence over a vast area, extending its reach far beyond its borders. The empire's trading activities were not limited to gold and salt. They also included other goods such as ivory, kola nuts and slaves, which were traded with Arab and Berber merchants from the north and other African kingdoms. The trading networks established by Mali were intricate and far-reaching, involving a complex system of trade relations, credit, and exchange rates. These networks were the arteries through which wealth flowed into the empire, enabling it to flourish and grow in power and prestige. The wealth of the Mali Empire was not solely material, it was also cultural and intellectual. Under Mansa Musa's patronage, Timbuktu transformed into a center of Islamic learning and culture. The University of Sankor in Timbuktu, with its renowned scholars, libraries and manuscripts, became a symbol of the high level of education and intellectual activity in the empire. Artists, architects and scholars from Africa and the Middle East were drawn to Mali, leading to a rich amalgamation of cultures. This period saw the construction of significant architectural works, including the famous Jingwareber Mosque in Timbuktu, built by the Andalusian architect Abu es Haq es Saheli, whom Mansa Musa had brought back from his pilgrimage. The social structure of the Mali Empire was complex and hierarchical. The emperor, or Mansa, held absolute power, underpinned by a belief in divine right. Below the Mansa were governors, often relatives or close allies, appointed to administer the various provinces of the empire. This system of governance ensured loyalty and efficiency in administration. Malian society was stratified, with a clear caste system. At the top were the nobles and ruling elites, followed by free citizens and then artisans, who were organized into guilds. Each caste had specific roles and responsibilities, and this structure maintained social order and contributed to the empire's stability. The role of the Nyamakala, a class of artisans, was particularly significant. They were not only craftsmen, but also custodians of the oral history and culture. This included the griots, skilled storytellers, poets and musicians, who played a vital role in preserving the history and legends of the empire and its rulers. The golden age of the Mali Empire under Mansa Musa left an enduring legacy in African and world history. The empire's achievements in governance, economics, culture and scholarship during this period are exemplary. The wealth and grandeur of Mali under Mansa Musa garnered the respect of other nations and established the empire as a significant player in the medieval world. This period of Mali's history is not just a story of material wealth. It's a narrative of how a powerful African empire contributed to the global exchange of ideas, cultures and technologies. The Mali Empire during its golden age serves as a potent reminder of Africa's rich and often underrepresented contributions to world history. The decline of the Mali Empire, which began in the late 14th century, is a complex narrative marked by internal challenges and external threats. This period of decline was not an abrupt end, but a gradual erosion of the empire's power and influence, leading to its eventual fragmentation. The seeds of decline were sown within the empire itself. The vastness of the Mali Empire, stretching across a significant portion of West Africa, made centralized control increasingly difficult. As the authority of the central government weakened, provincial governors and local leaders began asserting more autonomy, often challenging the emperor's authority. This fragmentation of power was exacerbated by succession disputes and rivalries within the royal family, leading to periods of instability and civil strife. Externally, the Mali Empire faced threats from emerging powers in the region, most notably the Songhai Empire. The Songhai, initially a vassal state of Mali, 
began to assert their independence under the leadership of Sunni Ali in the late 15th century. Sunni Ali and later Askia Muhammad expanded the Songhai Empire's territory, capturing key cities and trade routes. This expansion directly undermined Mali's economic and military strength, further hastening its decline. By the 17th century, the Mali Empire had fragmented into several smaller states. These successor states, such as the Bamana Empire and the Kingdom of Kabu, retained elements of Mali's political and cultural systems, but lacked the cohesion and power of the former empire. The disintegration of the empire led to a period of regional fragmentation, characterized by frequent conflicts as new powers vied for dominance. Impact of Slavery and Colonization The decline of the Mali Empire coincided with two major historical forces that would profoundly impact West Africa, the transatlantic slave trade and European colonization. The impact of the transatlantic slave trade on the Mali Empire and its successor states was profound and far-reaching. This brutal chapter in history reshaped the societal, economic and political landscapes of West Africa, leaving scars that are still visible today. The Mali Empire, during its zenith, practiced a form of slavery that was markedly different from the transatlantic slave trade. Slavery within the empire was more akin to indentured servitude and was often integrated into the existing social and economic systems. Slaves in the Mali Empire were typically prisoners of war, debtors, or members of slave castes. They had certain rights and could integrate into society over time, sometimes gaining significant positions. However, with the advent of the transatlantic slave trade in the 15th century, the nature of slavery in West Africa dramatically changed. European demand for labor in the Americas led to the commodification of human lives on an unprecedented scale. Slaves were now captured or bought not for integration into African societies, but for export across the Atlantic. This shift had a destructive impact on the societies that once formed part of the Mali Empire. Firstly, the transatlantic slave trade introduced a level of brutality and dehumanization that was previously unknown. The conditions of capture, transportation, and life in the Americas were horrific, stripping individuals of their dignity, culture, and connections to their homeland. The Middle Passage, the journey across the Atlantic, was particularly notorious for its inhuman conditions, resulting in the deaths of millions. Secondly, the scale of the slave trade had a significant demographic impact. The regions that once comprised the Mali Empire lost a substantial portion of their population, particularly the young and able-bodied. This loss led to a demographic imbalance, which had long-term social and economic repercussions. The depletion of the population hindered agricultural production and weakened the state's military capabilities, making them more vulnerable to external attacks and internal strife. The societal structures within the Mali Empire and its fragments also underwent profound changes. The slave trade eroded traditional kinship and social networks, as communities were torn apart by slave raids and the constant fear of abduction. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw the Scramble for Africa, where European powers colonized much of the African continent. This colonization had far-reaching effects on the political, social, and economic fabric of West African societies. In the case of the Mali Empire's remnants, French colonialism played a pivotal role. The French, driven by a desire for resources and a strategic advantage, embarked on a campaign to establish control over the West African region. This colonization was marked by military conquests, treaties, and the establishment of colonial administrations. One of the most significant impacts of colonization was the dismantling of traditional governance systems. The complex social and political structures that had evolved over centuries, including those inherited from the Mali Empire, were largely disregarded by the colonial powers. The French imposed a centralized administrative system based on their model of governance, which was alien to the local populations. This new system often placed French officials and a few selected local leaders in positions of authority, undermining the traditional power structures. Chiefs and local rulers who had wielded significant influence were either co-opted into the colonial system or stripped of their power. 
This restructuring led to a loss of traditional authority and a disruption of the societal balance that had existed for centuries. Colonialism in West Africa involved the arbitrary redrawing of boundaries with little regard for existing cultural, ethnic, and linguistic divisions. The region that once comprised the Mali Empire was split into various colonial territories. This division often grouped disparate groups together or separated closely related communities, leading to long-lasting ethnic and territorial conflicts, some of which persist to this day. The colonial era introduced new economic systems that were primarily designed to benefit the colonial powers, particularly France. The focus shifted to the extraction and exportation of natural resources, such as gold and agricultural products, to feed the industrializing European economies. This economic shift disrupted the traditional economies, which had been based on a combination of agriculture, trade, and artisanal industries. The introduction of cash crops for export often resulted in the neglect of local food production, leading to economic dependency and vulnerabilities. Additionally, the imposition of taxes and forced labor further burdened the local populations. The impact of colonization on the culture and society of the region was profound. The French pursued a policy of assimilation, aiming to impose French culture and language on the colonized populations. This policy led to the erosion of local languages, traditions, and cultural practices. Education systems were established to promote the French language and culture, often at the expense of indigenous knowledge and languages. While this did lead to the creation of an educated elite, it also contributed to a sense of cultural dislocation and loss of identity among the wider population. Mali as it is today. The modern state of Mali as it exists today is a direct product of the colonial era. The boundaries of present-day Mali were shaped during this period encompassing a diverse range of ethnicities and cultures. The struggle for independence in the mid-20th century was a reaction against colonial rule and a movement towards self-determination. Today, the territory of the former Mali Empire is part of several West African nations, including Mali, Senegal, and Guinea. Post-independence, the challenge for Mali was to forge a national identity and cohesive state from the diverse legacy of its colonial past. This challenge involved reconciling the different cultural, linguistic, and political fragments left by both the ancient Mali Empire and the more recent colonial period. Despite the decline of the Mali Empire and the tumultuous periods of the slave trade and colonization, the legacy of the empire remains deeply ingrained in the region. The cultural, scholarly, and administrative achievements of the Mali Empire continue to echo throughout West Africa. The oral traditions, music, and art that flourished during the Mali Empire have been passed down through generations. Stories of figures like Sundiata Keita and Mansa Musa continue to be told by griots, preserving the history and culture of the empire. The architectural achievements, notably in cities like Timbuktu, remain as testaments to the empire's historical significance. The intellectual legacy of the Mali Empire particularly in the fields of Islamic scholarship and literature, has had a lasting impact. The manuscripts of Timbuktu and the legacy of the University of Sankor symbolize the high level of intellectual and scholarly activity that characterize the empire. Festivals and music in West Africa, particularly in Mali, Senegal, and Guinea, often trace their origins back to the traditions of the Mali empire. Music, an integral part of Mali's heritage, retains elements from the empire's era. Instruments like the kora, a 21-string lute bridge harp, balafon, a kind of wooden xylophone, and djembe, a goblet drum, which were prevalent during the empire's reign, remain central to the musical traditions of the region. Festivals such as the Festival Sur le Niger in Mali and the Saint Louis Jazz Festival in Senegal showcase the rich musical heritage of the region. These events are not only celebrations of music, but also of the diverse cultural traditions that have evolved from the time of the Mali Empire. The architectural heritage of the Mali Empire, particularly in cities like Timbuktu, Gao, and Djenne, continues to be a significant aspect of the region's cultural identity. The distinctive Sudano-Sahelian architectural style 
characterized by mud brick buildings with wooden log support beams, is a direct inheritance from the Empire's era. The Great Mosque of Jene and the University of Sankore in Timbuktu are enduring symbols of the Mali Empire's architectural and intellectual achievements. In modern times, the history of the Mali Empire is a source of pride and identity for many in West Africa. It serves as a reminder of the region's ability to create and sustain powerful, sophisticated civilizations. Additionally, the story of the Mali Empire challenges the narrative that Africa's history is one of unbroken poverty and underdevelopment, showcasing instead a continent rich in culture, resources, and historical complexity. This brings us to the end of this video. Tell us what you think in the comments section, as we are always interested in your thoughts. As always, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos to let more people know the truth about blacks and to hear their own part of the narratives. Thanks for watching.